What is up, guys? Welcome to a new WordPress series. This one is going to be about developing a simple starter plugin. And this series is not going to be super complicated on what we are building. We're going to be building something very easy, and we're going to be focusing on the basics of how to do the foundation. Uh, when you're building a when you're building a house, for example, the most important piece is the foundation, or one of the most important pieces is the foundation, because if you build it on a, a ridiculous foundation, you're gonna get ridiculous clown house. And that's exactly what happens if we start with the ridiculous foundation for a plugin. We get a clown of a plugin, and we don't want that, and we don't wanna look like clowns. I mean, maybe some of us do, but we don't wanna look like clowns. And the, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna start with the first video and keep it super simple, and we're going to take an approach that's going to make our life a lot easier. We could start building a plugin from scratch, which is no problem. We could absolutely do that. But why waste time and why reinvent a wheel when we can go start with a boilerplate? And that's what we're going to do. This is a free downloadable boilerplate. The website is WPPB.io. Uh, we, I'll leave a link in the description for this. And uh, this is a pretty cool starter uh plugin that's been created over quite a few years by different people who are in contributors who have helped create this plugin. It's pretty excellent. And we're going to go ahead and just start with this as our base and it's going to help us quite a bit. And I remember when I said I wasn't sure if it was going to be object oriented or not. In this case, we probably will keep it object oriented and, but we're going to try to keep it really simple object oriented. That way we don't lose anybody because this can get really advanced really fast. And there's a couple of courses on, uh, WordPress right now about building plugins that are object oriented and uh, they're pretty good. I, I think that the people who made them are pretty good, but they get pretty complicated pretty quick for somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience with this kind of thing. So I already downloaded this and I put it on my desktop and the files are right here. And let's go ahead and take a look real fast at what is contained. All right, so we have a readme, a change log for that simple plugin. And the plugin itself is right here, and it just says plugin name. Okay, and in here is all the setup that they did for the way your plugins are, or for the way WordPress reads the plugin. We can get a better view on this by going into our C drive, into our XAMPP, into our htdocs, and let's pick a site. Remember our SEO local? We're gonna use this site to build our template plugin. But the plugins are located, so we're inside our, our actual files for our WordPress site. And if we go into WP content, you, this is where your themes and plugins are stored. Let's go into the plugins and here's all those plugins that get installed by WordPress. And let's take a look at any of them. Let's just go for Duplicator, for example. And these are all the files that Duplicator uses. This is all of its code and how it runs and what it does and what it looks like in your dashboard and where it adds to menu. All those settings are right here. And so when a plugin gets installed, it installs under its name in, a plug, in the plugin directory. And it has all of its its files and its folders and all of its CSS and everything that it uses for it, the plugin. Well, if we're going to install a plugin, there are two ways to do this. One way is we can take the file plugin name from the WordPress boilerplate master directory and drop it directly into here. And we will now have a new plugin called plugin name on our site that we can see. This is our SEO local under plugins. And I'll show you guys that right now. So we don't see it here yet. Let's go ahead and drag it in. So let's open up these. And I'm gonna go ahead and just run this as a copy. And now we have it over here. And this is in our htdocs in the WP content plugins. If we go ahead and refresh this, you're gonna see a new plugin with WordPress plugin boilerplate. And look at that, it's in there. And it was not activated because we just put it into the site. We didn't actually activate it through the dashboard. And uh, this information obviously can all be changed by us, which we will change. And, it, and it's not going to add anything to the side menu because nothing has been defined. This plugin is pretty great, or this little template. It's just a starter template that, actually we're gonna do the one that's physically live in the site. It's just a starter plugin that has nothing in it. And uh, basically that's, that's the point, right? Is that this is gonna help us start. So you don't have to create all this stuff on your own. We can uh, backbone on this and do all of our own stuff. So for example, this is the admin section. This is uh, what happens in your administrative part of your website when you, uh, it's, when you want things to change like menus to get added and pages and all that. We're gonna work on that. Includes, this is uh, all of the th certain things it calls to, like when it activates, when it deactivates, things like that. Then we have our languages folder. 
this is actually part of this plugin for multiple languages. Our public folder, this is what's publicly seeable on the front end, the CSS and all anything like that that gets seen on the front. And then we have an index. And the funny thing about plugins is they're always going to say silence is golden. And the reason they say that is because nobody can access this uh, directory directly by typing it in. It only can be accessed via the WordPress software. That's actually a security measure, and it's a pretty good one. Then you have your license info, your readme in here, your uninstall, and your plugin name. Now, in the plugin name, if we're going to start right there. This information here in plugin name, this is Notepad++, by the way. I've talked about this before. I actually generally, when I'm developing a plugin, and we're probably going to switch to it, I usually use a visual... Uh, studio code. I much prefer Visual Studio Code. I've actually been a Visual Basic programmer for a long time, so Visual Studio Code is really my preference. And we'll probably change that the next thing. But in this, you can see right away, these are commented sections. This is our PHP comments. And now you can see a uh, the name. This is the information that displays in the plugin section. So we have our plugin boilerplate. This is what it says here. Let's change this to WordPress in 10 or less new plugin and upon refreshing you're going to see there it is so that's where the information is called in for the wordpress to take a look and so all this information can be changed right in here you can change your description where the uh, license you can change any of this stuff the name of your company your company's website the version of your plugin all that stuff can be changed and then that will change in here and uh, and another quick thing is so there's a few things to take note of on plugins. Uh, one of the main important things is on the activation. When the plugin is activated, it will actually call to. Which I'm just going to close this so I don't get confused. It actually calls into the includes and into the activator PHP. We're going to actually break this down more uh, more specifically as we get along with each thing. So when it's fired during plugin activation. The cool part about this as well is that it has a lot of commenting to let you know what each thing is doing. And so it's a great place to learn for somebody who's trying to just figure out, okay, what is a plugin? How does it work? How is it set up? So when the when the plugin is activated, it will call to this class. And this is our, our plugin name activator. This You can change this like they say when you uh, are looking to change your whole plugin. And we're gonna re actually rename all this and everything. But here's the public static function for activation. So when the plugin is activated, we could do anything we want right here and it would show inside our WordPress backend on the activation. This is where we can hook into other things in WordPress and do all kinds of cool stuff on the plugin's activation. We can set up our menu items, call to our submenus and all that stuff, which we'll get into as well. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Here's the deactivator. What happens to the plugin when it gets deactivated? Well, we can set that up right here. What happens on the loader? All actions and filters for the plugin. We'll talk about actions and filters later. And that's important as well. And so here's where all that stuff can be loaded in. And uh, like I was talking about menus and adding menus and all kinds of things like that. It's pretty interesting, pretty cool. And when I show you doing this inside of the uh, inside of Visual Studio Code, we can actually get a, uh, it comes with a, a uh, little feature in Visual Studio Code called Emmet, and Emmet's gonna help us a lot with this. It's gonna, and we can also install, on top of Emmet, we can install WordPress uh, syntax so that the Studio and the Visual Code Editor actually knows when we're writing WordPress-based commands, and it will help us out on autocomplete, and that's gonna help you a lot too. And then same thing with the index here. It's just going to say silence is golden. This isn't allowing anybody to access these files directly. And this this is pretty great. This is uh, going to allow us, like I said, it's going to help us speed up quite a bit what we're doing here. And I may not even get super advanced into building. I kind of want to keep this course really easy and simple and creating even something as simple as a Hello World plugin that maybe has, like for example, maybe what we'll do is we'll start just by creating a plugin that has its own menu, maybe under the settings or maybe on its own. And it's just maybe going to have a text field that says, put the text in here that you want to output on your website. And then maybe we'll create a short code that outputs that or something like that so that you can get an idea of, okay, here's how the administrative works. Here's how saving information to the database works. Here's how doing a short code works. And then from there, you can start to get an idea of, okay, now I can create way more admin pages because I know how to create them. I can create way more short codes. I can do this and this and this. And maybe we'll integrate some API. Maybe we'll uh, use the YouTube API to... Uh, bring in videos or something like that. I'm not sure quite yet, but we're going to keep it real easy. And so the first thing, that's why I recommend the very first thing, is go ahead and go get a boilerplate, install it, pull it into your WordPress, your live WordPress site or your local WordPress site, 
and start playing around. Get into the files and look at what they are. This is a pretty simple plugin here. I mean, there's really not a ton to it. And that way you can start to take a look at the comments and see what each thing does. And you don't have to start from scratch because starting from scratch is kind of rough. I think I'm going to cut this video off right here. I don't want to make these too long. The channel name is, of course, in 10 minutes or less. And most videos are slightly exceeding it. I'm doing my best to keep them into it because there's a lot of information to cover quick. But there's going to be many more videos in this series. This is just video one. Uh, I don't know how many, but there will be quite a few. And that's going to wrap it up for part one. I uh, appreciate you guys watching it. Like, subscribe. Give me, uh, give me some feedback if you think that it's too fast, if you think it's too slow, as usual. Or if you have any other uh, feedback for me, I'd love to see your comments. And also, subscription keeps me uh, motivated to keep making more. But yeah, go get yourself a boilerplate, put it in, and I'll see you guys in part two.